What's up, everybody? The Game 2K2 here again, and I am here to finally give my review of Star Wars The Force Awakens. And the reason why I waited till after the weekend to do this is because I wanted a lot of the novelty to kind of wear off with myself, um, all, and my excitement to kind of wear off, because if I had let if I had let myself do a review after seeing the movie, this would have turned into a bum review uh, by Doug Walker, and I didn't want that. Uh, but with Star Wars The Force Awakens, it's the first Star Wars live-action film to be released in theaters in over 10 years now. Um, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, was the last live-action Star Wars movie to be released. And for some reason, after Episode Three, everyone seemed to already know that Episode Seven would be coming sooner or later. Um, even though George Lucas, the original creator of the franchise, had denied it for so long, for some reason we all knew Episode Seven was coming. And when Disney bought out Lucasfilm, when he sold the rights to Star Wars and all of his movies and his studio to, to Disney, we just knew Episode Seven was right around the corner. And sure enough, two years later, here it is in theaters. And there were a lot of questions going into this movie and how good it would be, how bad it would be. Um, some fans, a lot of fans actually, were really divided on how the movie would turn out, e even before it came out and before we knew anything of the story. A lot of people questioning, you know, would it be uh, like Episode 4, where it was a classic and it's, you know, a timeless classic? Or would it be like Episode 1, where it's the Star Wars movies that everyone tries to forget? Um, would it be like that? Would that be the first of the new trilogy? Would it be the classic of Episode 4? Would it be the flop that was Phantom Menace? Um, and the questions kept coming for months and months in the movie's advertisements. And there were so many people doubting that this would be a good movie that they literally ripped apart the first trailer. A great trailer, in my mind. Um, the first trailer, which came out earlier this year, was an awesome, awesome trailer. It was one of the best movie trailers I can remember that to build up a movie, especially a first trailer. Usually first trailers are teasers. Uh, this thing was a full-blown extravaganza. It was an awesome trailer. And almost every doubting fan ripped apart that trailer for all the wrong reasons. It was so funny reading um, comments for the trailer on YouTube. People like, oh my god, the Sith lightsaber actually looks like a sword. We can't have that. This movie's going to be terrible. And that's how the comments were. And that was sad that the comments were like that towards a movie that was still not out yet. In fact, the trailer, I think, came out eight, nine, probably even ten months before the movie even hit theaters. Um, but then the excitement started to really come. The second trailer came out, and then the third trailer, and the trailers just kept getting better and better and better and started to pique everyone's interest. And everybody got on board with this movie even before it came out. It was like the trailers really built this amazing amount of interest for this movie, so much more amazing than that of Jurassic World, as, mu as big as that movie was. And everyone walked into theaters this past weekend, and just the excitement this weekend was unmatched. Even by the final Harry Potter movies, Harry Potter movie standards, it was just unmatched. Everyone was in costume. Everyone was so excited walking into the theaters. There was cheering. There was yelling. There was just this anticipation that I had not seen in theaters for a very long time. The last movie I can think of that drew this much excitement um, in all honesty was Titanic when Titanic was reaching the peak of its uh, epicness in theaters when everyone was realizing how classic that movie was going to become then everyone started lining up in droves the opening weekend of Star Wars remind, reminded me of that and I walked into theaters tried to have a really clear head about it I didn't want to get myself over excited didn't work but I tried um, because when you when you become overexcited over a movie, and I've learned this from other Star Wars films, or movies in in other big franchises as well, like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and all all that, you build this excitement that 
it can't be matched. The excitement can't be matched, and you wind up leaving the theaters kind of disappointed in some small way. And I didn't want to do that with Star Wars. I wanted to go in there with a clear head and really have a fair perspective on what the movie was. The movie started, the Star Wars logo popped up, music started by John Williams, and yeah, that clear head really went away after that. I was so excited watching the movie. And the number one question that went into this movie uh, when it released was, was it going to be as good as the hype built it up to be? And the simple answer to that, for the most part, is yes. Yes, and I say for the most part uh, for a reason. I'll get to that soon. Uh, But I'm going to try to not give away any spoilers here, so I won't go into too much detail over the story, and I will try to keep the spoilers at a minimum. Um, The story follows a new character named Rey. It's the first uh, main female protagonist that I can remember in the series uh, that had such a big role, even bigger than what uh, Princess Leia's role was in the first two movies. That's how big this character is in this movie. Um, There is a male uh, protagonist as well named Finn, uh, former stormtrooper turned good guy in the movie. And the story, without going into too much detail, to really give you a sense of what the story is like, it's a very, very well-written story. Um, It has a great plot to it. However, this story is very much banking on the fact that you saw the previous films, and I will tell you this, for anyone who is coming into this franchise uh, with a fresh start and has not seen the previous movies, you will be very lost in this. Um, And if you're seeing Episode 7 without seeing the previous ones, I kind of wonder why you're seeing the movie anyways. Uh, my wife got tra- I dragged my wife to it because I didn't want to go alone to the movie and she had never seen a Star Wars movie in her life and she just kept looking to me during the movie like what the hell is going on in fact she made a comment towards the lightsabers that I'm glad no one else overheard um, <laughs> she said the lightsabers reminded her of glow sticks and I remember looking backwards like oh god sweetie do not say that here in the theaters people are going to think People are going to want to kill us because you're just in the Hall of Nerds, Star Wars nerds, when you're in a theater watching a Star Wars movie. Um, But the movie was great. It had great action. It had great acting. The acting just blew all the prequels away. And it actually was better than the original trilogy. And that was actually one thing that kind of caught everyone off guard. Everyone was expecting the cheesy kind of corny acting that came from the prequel series as well as the some of the corny acting from the original trilogy the acting was magnificent in this movie it was one of the best acted sci-fi movies i ever attended and to say it was a star wars movie that says a lot um and then then there was you know seeing this all out nostalgia went off in my head when i saw this movie seeing the millennium falcon i was cheering with er- with everyone when that came out han solo coming onto the screen i cheered for that leia coming onto the screen i gave a golf clap for that like everyone for some reason leia didn't get the best response when she came onto the screen um you know han solo got a big cheer luke skywalker got a big cheer at the end um but leia for some reason got a golf clap in theaters and i don't know why <laughs> Um, but if I had to say anything that was really hindering to the movie in any sense, and I know a lot of people are going to rip, probably rip me apart for saying this, but the one bad element of the movie was the lightsaber battles. That's it, one thing. If I had to say anything 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 about george lucas's directing um was that he directed some of the best lightsaber battles ever he knew how to direct action that was um george lucas's skill not only was it great on visuals but he was a great action director um not a great acting director that's a little different but he was a great action director the sword fights, or I say sword fights, because that's pretty much what lightsaber battles are anyways. I always called them sword fights, because, um, you know, that's how my brain works. Um, 
But the lightsaber battles in this movie are slow. The camera angles are too close up. You can't really get the intensity from these battles that you do from previous movies. Even the original trilogy where the lightsaber battles were slower than the prequel series. Even though they were slower, there was an emotional drive to them that really had you invest it. Like the lightsaber battle between Darth Vader and Luke um, in Empire Strikes Back. You just felt the emotion of that and you felt the emotion again in Return of the Jedi. In The Force Awakens, I'm not getting any of that emotion from the lightsaber battles. I felt like the lightsabers were just there for nostalgia purposes. Um, and I shouldn't be feeling that way. I should feel excitement when I'm watching these battles. I didn't get that from this movie, unfortunately. Um, the rest, however, is very good. The character development is good. Uh, the story is amazing. And again, the acting is top-notch. Uh, I want to I keep this review short. And to the point, again, I'm trying to leave spoilers out of this, which is why I want to keep it short. I don't want to make this one of my 30-minute reviews like I did for uh, for the last Harry Potter movie. Um, but if I had to say one of the best elements of the movie was seeing the original cast again. Harrison Ford, uh, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher... Um, the original characters, R2-D2, C-3PO, um, just these great characters, and it was awesome to see all of them again, and Han Solo is just as funny as ever. Um, Luke Skywalker, uh, I will give away a, a spoiler on this one, especially for those, don't go in with too much excitement expecting to see Luke right off the bat, let me just say that. Uh, Luke actually doesn't appear until the end, however... When he does appear, it is well worth the wait because it is a great movie and it is worth the wait to see him on screen. Um, and it's probably one of the best endings I can remember from any of the Star Wars films. Um, but overall, with Star Wars The Force Awakens, is it a great movie? Yes, it is. Did it live up to the hype? Yes. Um, is it the best action out of all of them? Um, the space, the space battles, yeah, the space battle was great. Uh, lightsaber battles, not quite so good this time around, but that's a small flaw. If you're, if you're wanting to go see a great Star Wars movie, and you have been waiting so long to see it, this is definitely your chance to see it. It's a great movie, it was worth the wait, and I can't wait until the next episode. I want to thank you guys so much for listening, and I will see you next time.